Um, before I get into it, because I want to lean into that in a second about mm -hmm. just like coming to that mental and like really just that state of maturity of being over that lifestyle, especially that last bid. Mm -hmm. And myself, I've been to prison three times. And of course, each bid, like you said, it hits different, you know, because we get institutionalized, we get used to it, it may be right. fun. But then as we get older, we're like, yo, this is crazy and I'm over right. this. Yeah. So but before I get into that, uh, can you maybe give us a few examples or some of the craziest things that you saw in prison? Maybe just some insane memories that you know you'll never forget. All right, good afternoon. This is State of Florida versus Stephen Testa with multiple cases before the court. Yo, what's poppin', man? It's your boy E.I. The King, and this is the Incarceration Podcast, where I talk about prison, pre, post, and present, and how everything that I experienced throughout my incarceration has forever changed my life. This is the Incarceration. So Forever Convict family, once again, we are on the journey to 50,000 subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so now. Sure. <laughs> well, um, so, yeah. So, there, I mean, I was, I mean, I saw a lot of violence. I mean, you know, but anybody in prison sees a lot of violence. I mean, you know, I saw a lot of guys get stabbed and ripped their faces, ripped open. Um, but I, my personal experiences... Um, well, in my first bit, uh, my first bit, there was this guy there from the Bronx. He looked like the Hulk, this guy. He was like really, really big, you know. Um, and this was my first little crazy experience that I had personally. He looked like the Hulk, this guy, the Italian kid. But he was very jealous of me because I had it really good, you know what I mean? Like, and he was just one of them kids that were jealous. He was just a jealous kid. And, um, and we had words. And, and he sort of called me out like, tonight, me and you in the gym. So the gym was down these steps. Now, you know, once a guy pulls your card, you got you to fight or you're going to get creeped out. You know what I mean? So now I'm in my cell. I'm going, oh, man, this guy looks like the Hulk. He's going to mess me up. He's going to F me up, this guy. Wait a minute. You know, I was 23 years old. I was like skin and bones. I was thin, you know, and this guy was like, ooh. I go, this guy's going to mess me up. Oh, my God. Right? So anyway, we come out of the cells to go to, uh, to the night rec, and as we got to the front of the, the steps, he was like a little bit in front of me, and he, and, and I... I threw him down the stairs. I just shoved him down the stairs. And I ran down the stairs and, and I messed him up. I hurt him. And he broke his arm. He never gave me up. You know, um, the CO came. We said he fell down the stairs. Um, they took him to the wherever they, you know, to, to, the, to the hospital. He came back. He had the, the uh, cast on his arm. And uh, he never gave me up. And we sort, we sort of made up. Um, we sort of made up. And uh, we sort of became, I guess you could say, somewhat of friends. But uh, that was my first like uh, experience with any kind of violence that I participated in in prison. But um, crazy things I saw in Attica. I was telling my friend the other day there was this guy called Bruno Batts. He was um, well, they called him Bruno Batts because I guess he was batty. He had killed a bus driver in Brooklyn, this guy, and he had 25 to life. And he was a huge, huge guy. And he was sort of one of them guys that were like a genius and crazy, but a genius. Like, he loved the Roman Empire, and he actually taught himself how to speak Latin. Like, he memorized Shakespeare. He re 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 repeat what we re would, you know, give you Shakespearean quotes like this, and but he never showered. He had this thing against showering, and he would stab you in a minute. He stabbed a lot of people. So the Italian guys come to me because me and him were friendly. He, and they come to me, and they told me, listen, Bruno's got to take a shower. You got to tell him to take a shower. I said, why do I got to tell him to take a shower? Use are the wise guys, and the, use are the gangsters. You just go tell him. They go, no, you got to tell him. You're, uh, he knows you. He knows you're Andy's son, and bah, 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 bah. He used to call me Cougine, this guy. So I sit down with him, and I and I and I sit down. Now this guy's a killer. Like this guy's got a beard. I mean, this guy's big. And I sit down with him. And I tell him, "Listen, Bruno, do you respect me?" And he goes, "Yeah, I, Cousine, Of course, you know I respect you." I said, "Listen, Bruno, you got to take a shower." I told him, "You, you know, you, you're big. You, you know, it's not nice. You know, you 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 got some body odor. Everybody loves you. You got to take a shower." So he looks at me and he goes. Cousine, he goes, for you, I'm going to take a shower. He goes, but if any of them other guys say anything to me about this, I'm going to stab them in a heartbeat. <laughs> so these are the things I had to deal with. Um, but the craziest thing 
the craziest, craziest thing was the situations over the telephone. Um, I saw people get seriously hurt over the telephone, and I saw people get shook down over the telephone. Um, that's where the most insane things took place over the telephones because the gangs in Attica, there was four phones. The Latin Kings had a phone, the Creps had a phone, the Bloods had a phone, and the Jamaican Posse had a phone. So if you weren't hooked up, you were getting shook down to use the phone. So either you had a fight to use the phone or you had to pay to use the phone. Um, and that's where I saw the most craziest things take place over the phones. It's different now. Now it's all, um, you got to pay for It's a different system now. They stopped this. Back then it was all collect calls to the people you were calling. Now you have to have the money in your commissary to use the phone. They changed the system so there's no more violence over the phones. But that's why, I saw, even on Rikers Island, which was a crazy prison, I laid up on Rikers Island for a few months. I saw a guy get stabbed with a screwdriver over the phone. I almost had a beef over the phone. I rolled in over the phone and, and, and I, um, I went into this dorm and there was phones there. And I went to call up my son and these three big, I'm not racist, but these three big black guys came running over, telling, going like this to me, you're dead, you're dead. And I, this was in 91, and I didn't know what they were talking about. And I put my back against the wall, and there was two Puerto Rican guys over here against the wall, just hanging out, because there was two phones. And uh, the guy says to me, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to use the phone. I, I need to call my house. He goes, you ain't using that phone. I said, why not? He goes, because that's the black phone and that's the Puerto Rico phone. So I told him, where's the white phone? He went, there ain't no mother effing white phone down here. Now I know I got to go. Now I'm just saying to myself, please, God, don't let this guy cut my face. So I told the guy, well, listen, I don't give a F about that. I'm using one of those phones every day. I'm just praying inwardly, I like, please don't cut my face because now I know I'm going to go, right? Thank God, thank God. These two Puerto Rican guys, I'll never forget their names. One, uh, one was named BVD, was his nickname, and the other guy was named Charles, Charlie. They were Latin kings, and they were watching, and they saw what was going on, and they knew I was Italian. They didn't know who I was. They knew nothing about me, and they intervened because they saw I was ready to go. I got goosebumps, and they intervened, and they told me, don't, don't worry about them. You could use our phone, and they gave me a slot because there were slots. Everybody had all the everybody had a slot when they could use the phone, a 15 minute slot. And they gave me a slot on the phone and I was allowed to use the phone every day. And we became friends. And not only do we become friends, BVD, when he got out, I got him a job. He went he worked for me with my vending company. So those are like jailhouse experience I had where I guess you could say it was really life and death at some points over a phone. That's fire, bro. Thank you for yeah. sharing that. Cool. Share this channel with somebody who hasn't. And listen, if you've done any time, I'm talking about a county jail, state penitentiary, federal, or even drug programs, whatever. If you want to share your story on this channel, go ahead and email me at E.I. The King Booking. Go ahead and put your stories in the comments below. If there's anything that I talked about slightly, you want to go, you want me to go more in depth on, or anything I haven't talked about at all, and it's a good idea, drop it in the comments. Let me know. And also, so remember, I am a rapper. My artist name is E.I. The King. You can find my music on all platforms. I also have another channel, YouTube channel, uh, my official artist channel, E.I. The King. And I also have another podcast. It's called Let Me Talk Bro, where I talk more so about my life, music, ministry, and all these things. Also, I have a Patreon with exclusive content. Everything is in the description below. So listen, man, till the next time, it's your boy E.I. The King.